Welcome to the channel. The region of West Africa has an underdeveloped tourism industry, the results of which lead to many tourists avoiding countries like Guinea-Bissau. Especially for American travelers, the country of Guinea-Bissau is even more complicated to visit because of gaps in transportation, information, and communication. The logistics of getting here and the unknown scene on arrival is something that holds back many travelers. This video is a documentation of an overland journey to and from Bissau, the capital and namesake of this country. A glimpse of everyday life through a journey down streets and roads and through the atmosphere of traffic and markets. Many people who come to Africa end up in the southern and eastern regions of the continent. Attractions like Victoria Falls and Serengeti National Park pull the vast majority of tourism, leaving countries in the west somewhat unvisited and harder to get to. The linguistic characteristics of West Africa, where English is not widely spoken outside of the Gambia, Ghana, and Nigeria, restricts countries like Guinea-Bissau from receiving many English-speaking tourists. It's sometimes worth hiring a translator for trips to countries where English is not easily communicated. In developing countries, this is not only important for getting around, but is also affordable. Containing the only port for the export-driven economy and nearly a quarter of the population, Bissau is an important city for the country. Cashews make up half of those exports, and to gold, another quarter, leaving their economy very undiversified. Going to any one of Bissau's many markets shows just how vibrant the city is and how friendly the people are. Guinea-Bissau's tropical climate yields many different types of crops many of which were just harvested. Many of the people in the markets come from all over the countryside to sell things and buy things. The Bissauans are quite interesting in terms of religious beliefs, with 45% of the population practicing Islam, 30% practicing traditional African folk religions, and the remaining 25% primarily Catholicism thanks to the Portuguese. The convergence of the Islamic world with the Western and African has produced a diverse and unique culture. Although there are many languages spoken in Guinea-Bissau, most of the population speaks a Creole to communicate with each other. 30% of the population can communicate in Portuguese and about the same amount can speak French. Portuguese and French tourists make up most of the international visitors from outside of Africa. Europe influences the region today in the form of the CFA franc or CEFA. The CEFA keeps Guinea-Bissau and many other countries in West Africa from trading with other countries outside of the EU by deflating their exchange rates through a euro-backed currency. Because of the restrictions on trade, most of Guinea-Bissau's imports come from Senegal, another CEFA country. Many different Senegalese products, from tea to produce, can be found in Bissau's markets. The Bissauans may not be in the best situation today, but most people in the country are actively seeking a better future. The city of Bissau could one day be a well-known destination with political and economic stability. Transit hubs, known locally as garages, are scattered throughout the region's major settlements and junctions. Going from garage to garage is the local way of getting around and is also the cheapest. Everyday people need to get from point A to point B, even if they don't have very much money. And because not many Africans own cars, there are huge networks of taxis and minibuses that are extremely cheap compared to other places with high volume public transportation. Although it hasn't been covered in this video, the country of Guinea-Bissau has a lot to offer outside of its main city. Communities out in the countryside where they host huge music and dancing events, and an archipelago inhabited by vast wildlife, are just a couple of the other destinations in the country. The famous Guinean forests are lush, even now during the dry season. North towards Senegal, the highway passes orchards of cashews, mangoes, and palms. 
The scenery is about to significantly change as the camera heads to the river nation of the Gambia and then further north to the Sahara. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see the next part in the series and maybe future trips, please consider subscribing.